The remnants of Cyclone Dorvey have walked much of the country today, bringing 150 kilometre an hour winds, which caused chaos for commuters and left thousands without power. I'm trying to see, oh my God, our bridge down there is underwater, Carrie. The bridge down there is underwater. I've had my heart broken in two. But something's different next to you. It's like my soul is set on fire. So this is the damage from the flood. Pretty much knocked this gate out. I'm not quite sure what's the best way to go about this. I think what I'm going to try to do is just get started by reconnecting these uh, pieces of timber here to the fence posts and uh, clearing away some of this excess debris some of the logs and wood that's gotten jammed in the fence and just uh, see what we can do to try to get this connected again and back in work in order. The storm definitely did a little bit of damage on that fence, but nothing that couldn't be fixed with a couple of screws. We did lose power for about three days after the cyclone, but in last week's video, I started the project of retiling our fireplace hearth. So let's get back into that. Oh my goodness. <sighs> Friends, we're back, we're here. We are looking at the tiles because today I'm gonna actually do them. So what I've done is I've laid all the tiles out in their prospective places with the little spacers so we can get a good idea of where we're gonna be working from. Uh, usually when it's centered, you want to start from the middle and work your way out. But because we have this little nub right there um, I'm just gonna start on one side and work my way over. All right, so I've removed all the tiles and I've laid them out in the order they need to go. And now I'm gonna just sweep up the surface because you need the surface to be as clean of debris as possible before you put the tile adhesive down. So fairly straightforward. It's kind of like a little puzzle. It's a little puzzle with lots of sticky things that are difficult to repair if you do it wrong. So here's what we're starting with. We've got all the tiles laid out. We have the adhesive and we have our trowel here. This is a 10 millimeter trowel. And so what we'll do is we'll just scoop it on here and then we're gonna scrape it out. You use these little notches so that there are notches in the adhesive, which helps the tile stick better.
Okay, so you just load the trowel up and honestly, it's a consistency that almost looks like it could be like icing on a cake, honestly. So then you just get over and you just try to get it evenly into all of the corners, which is actually kind of hard, especially with the fact that like, you know, we don't want to take the mantelpiece off of the fireplace, um, which kind of makes this a little more challenging than uh, it needs to be. But, you know, taking the mantelpiece off of the fireplace is a big job itself and it's not absolutely necessary. So we're just gonna do our best to get this into all the little nooks and crannies that we can. And uh, then any extra we'll just take back off and put back in the bucket. But um, it's just fun, it's like, Kind of, uh, it's artistic for sure, you know? Like, I think that tile layers um, are artists, you know? Think about some of the oldest artwork that we have are mosaics, mosaic tiles from, you know, like ancient, uh, the, the Middle East, from Babylon and Sumeria. We have these beautiful mosaic pieces of art and like, chances are, there were some unnamed tile layers there doing the deed. So you gotta, you gotta harness your inner artist a little bit to figure this all out, but um, there is something oddly gratifying about spreading tile adhesive. And now once we get this all down, the truly fun part begins, which is um, actually laying the tile. So get to it. So this is the next day. The grout is all dry and it's looking good. We like the color as well, which matches. Now what's left to do is essentially all the cleanup painting along the trim for the, this skirting here, as well as the whole facade of the fireplace. We're gonna give a touch up with um, the white that we've been using for the trim around the rest of the house. And then we bought a can of spray paint, which is this kind of gunmetal matte black for the fireplace. So that's all on the to-do list. And then once that's all done, the fireplace should be finished, should be, should be good to go. 
Whether or not all of that's gonna happen in this video, that's a great question. It's one I don't really have an answer to, although I do have an inkling of an answer, which is probably no, because we leave the day after tomorrow for a nice little four day vacation. We're gonna be going somewhere super healing. We're gonna be hanging out in hot springs and just unplugging and relaxing. And it's gonna be really good because, you know, for the last almost six months now, we've been in this house working away nonstop. So it's gonna be nice for us to take a little vacation. I may have talked about this trip in a previous video, but we actually postponed it because we had more stuff to do here at the house. And so we didn't actually go, but this time we're going, we're leaving the day after tomorrow. And um, we're gonna try to get as much as we can do done around here, but obviously projects remain. And speaking of an upcoming project, this is kind of the big reveal that um, we've been talking about for a while, but haven't got around to showing you. All of the stuff has arrived, all of these boxes. These are all of the pieces that will be going into our bathroom renovation. Friends, we have been waiting for this day because it's a big, big step forward, a leap, one giant leap forward, not for mankind, but for this household. And that comes in the form of a bathroom renovation, which this house so desperately needs. Honestly, the most pressing renovation has to be the bathroom. And so we're gonna be starting that. It's all gonna happen a little bit like one step at a time though, because we got a quote from a renovator and it was just astronomically high. We balked, we were like, no way, no way, no way. This doesn't feel sincere. We spoke to our trustworthy plumber, Vinny, the legend, the one who saved us after our traumatic uh, laundry experience. Those of you who've been watching this channel for a while know what I'm talking about. Those of you who don't, you may want to go back and watch that episode if you want a laugh at our expense. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so he's going to be helping us with the installation of all of these appliances so that we can keep all the manufacturer's warranty because side note, if you install plumbing stuff, appliances that are water related by yourself, it instantaneously voids all warranties. So don't do that. Hire a professional. But yeah, so we got a new bathtub here, uh, a nice big new vanity with a slab countertop. This is gonna be the glass, the shower door essentially. Toilet, shower top, and a nice like sink. So it's all gonna look really, really good, but it's gonna take a little while because we're gonna be doing the demo ourselves and then we have to essentially book out all the little individual tradies to come in and do their stuff. Um, so yeah, we're, we're, we've, we're speaking to a plasterer, we're speaking to a tiler, and yes, even though I just retiled the hearth of the fireplace, um, tiling with water can be you know, challenging and it's oftentimes recommended to get a professional to do that as well. So we we're gonna to talk to a tiler, there's a lot left to do, but in the meantime, there is something that I can fix and should fix. So let's go do that.
I've fixed this gate before. A few times. It keeps coming undone. And I think the key is that the previous times that I fixed this, I used nails. And this time, I'm gonna use a construction screw. Why do you keep breaking? Huh? What are you doing over here? What do you think? Another batch of sourdough. <laughs> So explain, you've always been into the bread making, but yeah. just recently you've been on a real... More sourdough. Well, sourdough is just better for your gut. Um, I've done sourdough before. Um, we did a sourdough course actually here in New Zealand, and I've tried it back home in Los Angeles a while back. Um, I didn't have that much success with it when we were living in LA. I think I had like one batch that turned out okay. Um, and then when we went to the sourdough course, I learned a lot more here. So this is just me at the very beginning stages when it's still super sticky, um, kneading it. So I've watched a lot of different tutorials and um, yeah, I've just used a lot of different recipes and I've come to find that the key, for me at least at the beginning, is going in and just kneading as much as you can this stickiness because I think at the beginning, I don't know if you signed up for this like little tiny lesson, but um, at the beginning when you're kneading the sourdough, I think it's really easy to keep reaching for flour to make it easier to work with. But I've come to find that instead of just reaching for the flour, if you give it a good knead for a while, then it starts to really toughen up itself and then the sourdough is just kind of like less dry. It also um, puts more bubbles in there, doesn't it? Does, it? it does end up doing more bubbles. So I usually do like some flour on the space that I'm working with and then I won't, it's so easy to keep wanting to pull for it, but the more that you need, the less you need more flour and you don't want to just keep adding more flour. Then the it kind more of that you need, the less you need? Pretty much, the less flour you need, yeah. <laughs> the more that you wow. need. I mean, so it's already starting to kind of toughen up a little bit better. It's just fun to like look at that. Yeah, so then once you're like, once you're to a good place, then you end up putting it back in and then you let it sit and then it forms better. Obviously, you're, you caught me at the very beginning stages when it's really sticky, but I'm just gonna be here kneading for a bit to make it um, kind of all form together a little bit more. Wow. Yeah. It's like, instead of Play-Doh, it's just real dough and you can eat it. Yep. Amazing. True. So all of you like slime people out there who like watching the slime videos, we'll just take it one step further. There, there's your slime. I mean, look at that. But it's actually <laughs> edible and not made from plastic. No, right? but um, you probably, we didn't get to see, you didn't get any shots of my loaves. No, they were good loaves though. Actually, I, actually, I do have a shot. Insert shot. Carrie's been on a mission in here to just bake the perfect loaf of sourdough. And uh, I think I think she's getting there. I think it's pretty close. What are we doing now? We are adding baking soda and equal parts white distilled vinegar, and we're putting it into this bowl. We're gonna make a little cleaner for I the you fireplace. Were say like a, a, a volcano. Well, that that too. This yeah. is like a science project. It feels like it. <laughs> Me with the two together. <laughs> and then you put your goggles on mm -hmm. and your lab frock. So this is going to clean the fireplace before we do the spray paint. You know, the fireplace has been used and it doesn't look too flash. So what we want to do is we're going to use that high heat spray paint to recoat the fireplace because it's got these beautiful little tiles right there. Gosh, you did that, that's amazing. 
Um, and then <laughs> we're going to spray paint the whole fireplace and we're gonna clean that glass. Uh, and hopefully it will leave this whole area just looking real fresh and real new. Teenage years. Oh God, don't say that. I'm kidding, it's a joke. afternoon Friday afternoon and we're in the garden and um, we are cooking dinner I'm cooking dinner tonight look at these beans like are you kidding they're so good they're so big it's crazy uh, big feed of green beans can't go wrong these are also just great to blanch which is essentially you drop them in boiling water and then you take them out like two or three minutes later and you drop them in ice cold water and then you freeze them. So we're gonna do that, but we're also gonna eat some of these for dinner tonight because I'm cooking up some salmon and salmon and green beans is a real good combo. What I like about this variety, it's called uh, freezer, these are called freezer slims is that they're dwarf bean plants. So typically beans are climbing plants and you need to support them with trellises and stuff. And um, that's just a lot of work. I like these little ones because they, they don't need a trellis and it's just one less thing that you gotta take care of. So it's pretty cool. I like that uh, they don't need that extra support and they still produce pretty prodigiously, so I'm a fan. Obviously, Jack is not going to be climbing up this bean stalk, but I will be eating these beans, and so will Carrie. So let's grab some parsley, because we're going to be doing kind of like a tabbouleh, a little tabbouleh salad with the fresh tomatoes and the parsley so need some of that so we have all of the parsley for the salad tonight got a ton of green beans and some freshly harvested tomatoes for the salad as well so what we're going to do is we are going to blanch and then vacuum seal and then freeze these green beans so we'll take those and we'll just put them in there once it's like proper boiling you should leave it in there for three or four minutes and then we'll fill up a bowl with some ice water and um, this is what we're going to use after we steam the green beans we'll just throw them in the ice water and that much closer to chucking them in the freezer. Next thing we're gonna do is we are going to dice up some of these potatoes as well as a couple of these carrots and then we're gonna drizzle them in olive oil and some spices and put them in here to roast. 
chop them up roughly about the same size. Just get them in there with the potatoes. Olive oil, good source of good fats. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Get that roasting and then we'll get to work on the salad. The last step is the salmon, which is here. It's got a little uh, mustard, olive oil, salt and pepper marinade. Launching fret, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take that and we're gonna dump them in there from the hot water into the cold. Um, I might pick out a few for dinner tonight. All right, here's the fun part. We have those all done. So we're gonna get a little bag. Gonna dry these guys off into the bag. There you go. Those are all in there. Here comes the fun part, friends. So you turn this thing on, vacuum sealing. Pretty amazing. You line it up, click it in, it's clicked. You heard it, I heard it. And then you hit vacuum and seal. Now watch the magic. Now it's sealing. We're good, we're good, we're good. Check that out, boom. So get a little marker, write the date, and that goes into the freezer. Okay, moving right along, we're gonna do the salad, which is parsley, finely chopped, spring onion, finely chopped as well, tomato, finely chopped, mixed in with couscous, which I cooked yesterday, and um, some feta cheese. Then we're gonna season it with za'atar, coriander, salt, pepper, olive oil. Super simple, really delicious. Let's do it. My regular camera died, so we've switched to the phone, but let's get this going. Well, there you have it. Dinner is served and it's light and delicious, but I am going to end this video here. We will get back to you next week. We're gonna have a little relaxing vacation. Might shoot a little video about that, but in the meantime, wishing you all very well. Hope you have a great time, and we'll see you next week on the channel. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. That, click subscribe for more videos if you're not subscribed already, and we'll see you in the next one. Bon appétit.